Recently, my girlfriend's been working her way through the Pokemon games, and for some added spice, I've had her play them with Nuzlocke rules. It's been going about as well as you'd expect. Whoa, what kind of tree are you? Bert! <laughs> Despite the ups and downs she's faced, she did manage to complete the first two generations successfully. So today we pose the question of how she'll manage for the third. Ha! She's so cute! That's me! With this one, we're putting the cap on the Game Boy Advance portion of her Pokemon journey, as she tackles the last cartridge on the GBA and my personal favorite entry in the series. Let's see if she can make a splash in the land of too much water, because this time I made my girlfriend play Pokemon Emerald. I know a lot of folks were hoping for the remakes of Ruby and Sapphire, but with the addition of Megas, 3D models, and roughly three new generations worth of Pokemon, I think Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire would have been too large of a leap for the girlfriend at this point in her journey. There's already going to be some unlearning here since HeartGold was technically a fourth gen game, but going forward things should be easier for her as we'll be playing main series games in order instead of remakes. As for why we're playing Emerald, I'd argue many would consider it to be the definitive edition of Ruby and Sapphire. To me, it seemed like the obvious choice of the three. Was I in the back of the moving truck? Ah! <laughs> My mom just had me in the back of the moving truck! As with her past two playthroughs, she'll be using Nuzlocke rules for this journey. So for a quick refresher, she has to use the first Pokemon she encounters on a new route or area, and should a Pokemon faint, it can no longer be used in battle. It instead has to go and live on a farm with all the other fainted Pokemon. With all the formalities out of the way, it's finally time to get to her actual playthrough. By this point in her Pokemon journey, she's gotten a pretty good handle on these games. Toward the end of her Heart Gold playthrough, she discovered Stealth Rocks, and with them her first hint, there was a little more to battling than just elemental rock, paper, scissors. Gen 3 will be where she bursts things wide open, and it's all thanks to one Pokemon, but more on that later. For now, she's still got the most important decision of every trainer's journey, choosing a starter. Whoa! In the previous two generations, she's shown a small bias toward the grass starters, but I had a feeling this would be where she finally shook things up. I gotta help them. Oh my god, wait. The pressure is on. I have to help Bert, but I have to pick my Pokemon. What a way to pick your starter, though. This is so fun. Trico is a cool Pokemon, but when she makes her choices, it usually comes down to another factor. Oh my god, okay, I can't not choose this guy. He's so funny. I had no doubt the other two would win her over, but it was anyone's guess which one she'd land on. Yes, 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 yes. A Mudkip named Splash. I like it. Welcome to the family, Splash. As she'd come to find out, Splash was a great choice. And I'm not just saying that because he's my personal favorite. At this point, she's gotten pretty good at the typings, and Mudkip's water ground type was something she recognized from all the quagsires she faced in Johto. An immunity to electric types meant that she only had one weakness to grass, albeit a pretty big one. Okay, just get him out. That was dicey. Unfortunately, there are a handful of grass types that pop up throughout the game, but in her time of greatest need, a champion emerged from the darkness. A hero the likes of which only legends will speak of. But before that, she found a Seedon. Come on, come on, come on. What is this That's little so guy? Rare. This is rare? That's so rare. He's like a little acorn. He's like oh! Like 1%. He's 1%? Yeah, Emerald, he's only 1 percent. Oh my god! Before even booting up the game, she told me she was determined to take things further in Gen 3. Fortunately, she stuck to that promise and already made good on her word with little Dot here. Oh my god, I like Nutmeg. Dot came with a move called Growth, which allowed her to boost her special attack. The only downside to the little acorn is that she doesn't learn any good moves. That, of course, can be remedied with TMs. And thankfully, Bullet Seed can be found not too far from the start. For those that don't know, Bullet Seed is a weak grass-type move, but with the caveat of hitting two to five times. On paper, this all seems kind of pointless, but ironically, what we have before us is the perfect combination of circumstances to learn to appreciate stat boosts. After encountering another C dot, she switched to hers out of fear of a grass type attack. Instead, it starts using Bide. Bide is a move that absorbs damage and deals it back twofold after a couple of turns. Now, thanks to having a C dot of her own, she knew exactly how it worked and knew not to attack while her opponent was storing power. Instead, she used the only non attacking move she had at her disposal, which was was the aforementioned growth. In plenty of cases, it wouldn't even take the second bullet seed to knock things out once she'd set up a couple of growths. Despite going about figuring all this out in the most roundabout way possible, setting up for a sweep became a new favorite in her Pokemon tool belt. Okay, let's do some bullet seed in now. 
With all that said, it should come as no surprise that she absolutely annihilated the rock type gym. When she chose Mudkip as a starter, it was never a question that she'd beat Roxanne, but ironically it was Seedot, the unlikely hero, who was the one to carry her victory in the first major fight. Yeah, we got the three! We got the four! Yes! Good job, Nutmeg! Get out of here, Roxanne! I just swapped with my little C dot nutmeg. <gasps> nutmeg wants to evolve! <laughs> What's nutmeg gonna look like? <gasps> She's amazing! <laughs> a little nuzzly for my nuzlocke! After the first gym badge, she continued her adventure and played through more of the story beats. Nothing of note really happened other than she caught this Ninkata, who she aptly named Chai and left at the back of her party. So far, my favorite part of having her play through this series has been seeing which Pokemon emerge forwards as the stars of her team. Many unassuming Pokemon have climbed the ranks to being favorites in our household thanks to her playthroughs, and Emerald would most definitely do the same. So for now, Chai's just hanging out with the rest of the group, but she wasn't going to be a bench warmer forever. Yeah. I ought to mention that the initial purpose of having her playthroughs be Nuzlocke was to make her more conscientious of the mechanical aspects of Pokemon. I've got big plans for her once she's become the very best like no one ever was. But until then, she's still got some leveling up to do. Conveniently, catching and training a variety of Pokemon in a Nuzlocke also helps to avoid the classic trap of power leveling her starter for the whole game. So far, I'd say this strategy has been a huge success as she's done a great job training a diverse team of Pokemon and recognizing that all Pokemon have their strengths and weaknesses. Look at how cool Splash is! Ironically, in Emerald, this was also to her detriment. Mudkip's single weakness to grass makes Splash a bit of a cure-all to almost every other Pokemon that gets sent out against her. Unless faced with the odd grass type here or there, she pretty much could just send out Splash and click Mudshot for an easy knockout. Splash is so good, I'm telling you. Look at that. This meant that while she tried to level up a balanced team, it was always her starter who was constantly pushing further and further ahead. What a clean sweep. I almost one-shot everything. Marshtop completely decimates three of the first four gyms in this region, so it goes without saying that he carried her through the first half of the game. I know you are. At least you think you are. Ugh. Splash, I know you're in your teenage phase, but she's not the one. She's not. Thank god, thank you. Things were starting to look a lot easier than I remembered, but then I thought about what comes next. The freight train would surely come to an abrupt halt once she made it to the fifth gym and faced off against her dad. Yo! Brendan, I have beat your ass each time we've encountered each other, okay? I am tough. God damn it. I gotta go. He just biked off! <laughs> I gotta go fight my dad so that I can prove Brendan wrong. As far as I can remember, the third generation is the only one to date where the protagonist actually has a father in these games. It's my dad! Yo! <laughs> I have a dad! Yeah, I got here by myself. Well, not by myself. I had all my Pokemon. I was like, he's just standing there. I bet mom gave him that flower. And they made sure the battle with him lived up to all expectations. Dad doesn't pull any punches in Emerald. Our gym leader told us to go all out and beat you. Dad's making it harder on purpose. Unless you know what to expect from him, you're pretty much guaranteed to face some casualties on your first Nuzlocke. Fine, as I promised, we will have a Pokemon battle. Tarny. <gasps> Oh my god, I feel like I'm in trouble or something. Regardless, learning that he specialized in normal types, she put her typing knowledge to use and trained up a fighting type. But the real question was if it would be enough to carry her to victory. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on, one more. Yeah, 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 yeah! Go, Chai, go! Oh! Get that confusing spin out of here. Yeah! Crit, crit, crit! And that would have been five! Loaf, loaf, loaf. Yes! Okay, fake out again, fake out again. After figuring out how slaking worked with the first fake out, she was able to devise a pretty sneaky path to victory by switching between two Pokemon that know the move. It was awfully lucky that she had two fake out users, but she did unfortunately run out of power points before she could get the knockout. Yes! 
Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Car. My dad can't believe that I beat him. I lost to Tardy. <laughs> He's gonna call my mom and be like, Tardy just beat me. With one of the harder gyms out of the way and access to the ability to surf, the whole world felt like it opened up for her. Exploring older routes that she'd used to boat across was the first of many things she was able to do with her shiny new HM. The way the western half of the map loops on itself makes it so there's really only one way to go if you want to explore east. So once she was done exploring, it was time to head north to the next gym. Kid was hiding inside of a rock. Not much change at this point in the game as far as her team composition was concerned. Marshdomp continued to be the star player and carried her to victory through the next few major encounters. Several flying type trainers along the road helped prepare you for the upcoming gym battle, but it's nothing her electric type couldn't deal with. In fact, her starter was still useful against flying now that he had an ice attack. So the freight train kept on chugging. All of Winona's flying types were at the mercy of an ice beam. Even in the face of grass types, she could only laugh as she hit them for super effective damage, knocking them out before they could retaliate with a. Oh. <gasps> Fuck! Fuck! No! Oh. I just lost Splash! How? Oh, it was paralyzed! And a, 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 one HP! <laughs> like Icarus before her, this is what flying too close to the sun looks like. A sunny day boosted solar beam sun. Ironically, her opponent was the one that was flying. I was afraid that might happen. This left her in a bit of a tight spot. To put it bluntly, she was kind of screwed. As much emphasis as I've placed on raising a balanced team, this is the first time she's having to face the repercussions of what not doing that looks like. That hurt. It was karma because I kept using him. She had some other team members, but they were more there as a formality than anything else. That wasn't more apparent than when Marshdomp went down and she sat there absolutely clueless about where to go next. I've never lost my starter that early before. I'm so upset. <laughs> don't ruin hey, the makeup. The yeah. The I don't think the reality really sunk in until she boxed him, but that's when the real waterworks started. As is customary when it comes to crying in games that make her play, we went out for a coffee, because it was way too early to get ice cream, and got her fighting spirit back. She's lost plenty of Pokemon before, but losing the starter always stings that little bit extra. Even still, when she came back to the game, she was stuck in the same wayward dilemma she was before the sobbing. I was just flying earlier, and now I'm like, my, I'm anxious, I'm like, slow. Whew. Stressing. With nowhere to go, she did the only thing she knew to do in a crisis like this. She called in her lifeline. An expert in the field, a veteran to the series, she sought the counsel of her mentor. That's right, you guessed it. It was time for some classic boyfriend damage control. And he was one level away from evolving, too. Wait, what? Yeah, he was one level away. <laughs> Wait, really? Let's assess the situation here. So, my team has just been getting absolutely bodied by grass types and by flying types. And Splash got bodied by a grass flying type. <laughs> In a way, there's a silver lining to losing Splash. Accidentally power leveling her starter was a spell she'd finally broken free from, and God forbid she'd have made it further before something like this happened. Besides, let's not forget he's not even dead. He's chilling on a farm with a Zubat and Pelipper she sacked off during her fight with Brawly. God, I just like, you know, I was using my other Pokemon, it's just because I don't have like, I'm just off my game. As she was quick to point out, the loss of a water type left a gaping hole in the type coverage of her team. But even that's rendered moot when you remember where we are. This is the Hoenn region. We're in the land of 7.8 out of 10 too much water. We can't even fit all the HMs on a single Pokemon, for God's sakes. Jeep! <gasps> Jeep! Oh my god, Jeep was... Oh my god. Jeep's like, just leave me in the past. I'm like, okay. By virtue of playing a Nuzlocke, you're gonna lose Pokemon. That's what you sign up for. It can be sad, but it's also an opportunity to try something new. Splash may have carried her to the shore, but now's a chance for a new friend to carry her across the sea. <gasps> it's a spew! It's rolling! She's so cute! While she got busy rebuilding her team and capturing new encounters, we took a break from the main story to appreciate some of the quirks from Gen 3. The third generation is home to all sorts of oddities introduced in the Pokemon franchise. Am I in Animal Crossing right now? <laughs> you have to go ahead and tell her. <laughs>
Go ahead and give her a new uh, catchphrase, Terry. <laughs> Why do I really want to have her rocking around saying damn straight? <laughs> <laughs> Since this is the first non-remake she's playing, plenty of what's here is the first of its kind. The developers threw a lot of what they had at the wall and hoped that at least some of it would stick. Some really cool things emerged from that, as well as some gimmicky one-offs as well. That said, I love Gen 3 all the more for it. These things are part of what makes it unique. And seeing her excitement as she discovered them reminded me of my own memories back when I was a child discovering Hoenn for the first time. <laughs> Secret bases are one such oddity. Back in the day, I thought they were the coolest thing ever and spent hours searching for the best place to build my base. Many a polka dollars that would have been much better spent on TMs or potions were blown on a new poster or rug for my base. As you can probably imagine, she went nuts for them as well. A secret base! I have a secret base? You can make a secret base somewhere. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> I have to have all the plushies. Pretty much as soon as she learned she could live in a tree, she had her eyes out for the perfect spot. Location, location, location. Exactly. Look in my tree house! Yes, I want a secret base here. It is so cool! So much room for activities. Oh my god, I can run in my secret base. They know. Once she'd settled on a place, the main objective became furnishing it. Saving the world can wait. Where does one obtain plushies? Decorations! Okay. Amusingly, battling trainers has always been a bit of a chore for her in these games. I've often joked about how funny it is to me when she dodges the trainer battles because battling is kind of the whole point of Pokemon. Now with that said, never was there a better motivator to battle than earning money to purchase decorations for her treehouse. He gave me 3k for decorations. Practically every battle ended with her lining her pockets with money for the decoration fund. Splash! It looks so cool, we have to honor him. Another quirky product of the third generation is Pokemon Contests. Essentially, these are pageants that you can enter your Pokemon into and win ribbons for. This is so funny, it's like a Pokemon pageant, I love it. I honestly wasn't expecting her to even touch the contest hall, but I should have known better. Once she learned what it was about, she was quick to drag Circus the Dawn fan out of retirement to compete. Needless to say, she got completely annihilated in her first attempt due to what she claims was sabotage. Wait, no, 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 no! 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 It took all of my heart! Oh. Not willing to accept her loss, she dusted herself and Circus off and decided to re-enter. This time, she did a little berry crushing and fed Circus some performance-enhancing drugs. Oh, she wants the tree! There's not much to say because I know very little about Pokeblocks and how they work, but whatever she did seemed to do the trick as she managed to make a much better impression on the crowd the second time around. Yeah. So good. And no one can take you away from me this time! Girl, the ah! <laughs> circus is doing amazing! Tarny Circus won. Oh! Tarny and Circus, congratulations! Yee! I couldn't have done it without Circus. The final addition I'll mention is Double Battles. This is actually the generation where Double Battles were first introduced. They existed in the other games she played, since those technically came out after this one, but since this is where they originated, they occur much more frequently than in Kanto and Johto. They're sprinkled heavily throughout the region, with many Double Battles using Pokemon to complement each other. Along with that, the developers decided to take things a step further and have an entire gym battle be in Doubles format, fully equipped with a nasty Levitate-Earthquake combo. There's two of them? Is this gym a Double Battle? What? This is a double battle? Yeah. Do I get two badges? This battle has notoriously been an ender for several locks, my own included, but it also served as the perfect stress test for a new team she'd built. Nice. Get him out of here. Nice. Nutmeg is confused. Wait, shit, don't knock yourself out. Nice! Nutmeg, nice! I forgot the nutmeg was confused. Yeah! Yeah! Oh my god! I didn't lose anybody! I thought I was gonna lose somebody! I beat them! With the seventh gym conquered, a ton of story stuff comes next. Access to the HM dive means that the ocean floor is now available for exploration. A big pearl! I just screamed secret item. 
One of the more infamous parts of Hoenn is the number of HMs you need to navigate it. This is especially bad during the last quarter of the game. Between Surf, Dive, and Waterfall, she realized she'd need a second water type because her tentacruel started to look like an HM slate. Add in Strength, Rock Smash, and Flash if you want to see anything, and you can see why I get so much hate. God damn it, I don't have strength on anybody. Arr. For me, it's always so painful giving up a move slot for a garbage attack like Cut or Rock Smash, especially on one of my permanent team members. But she doesn't think twice about it. I love that about the way she plays because it reminds me that the stakes are only as high as you make them. Who the hell has strength? Is it Circus? Anyways, with half her team box to make room for the HM users, she managed to progress the plot along to the point where the world was ending. They're gonna make the volcano erupt because Groudon left? That's so short-sighted. As it turns out, things got really serious really quickly because the evil team leaders are colorblind. So, as she aptly pointed out, it was now the responsibility of a 10-year-old kid to figure out how to clean up this mess. Whoa, it's a cutscene. Oh my goodness, they're going head-to-head. -head. Groudon's on like an island and Kyogre's in the water. Kyogre's like, I feel like has a type advantage, right? And, and it's raining. I'll take it to mean that you're prepared to become involved in this crisis. <laughs> I'm just here to get the gym badge, and they're kind of blocking it. Oh my god, okay, we need to get Rayquaza involved, like, immediately. He doesn't know where it is, though. How would I know? Has anyone talked to me about Rayquaza? Wait, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, my- Brendan, Brendan! Oh yeah, he called you. He did! Sky Pillar, I think- was it Sky Pillar? <gasps> There's so much earthquakes. He's leaving the entire fate of the world in the hands of a 10 year old. <laughs> okay, let's do this. <gasps> it's amazing. Oh my gosh. <gasps> it flew away! Man, all of these like legendaries in this one, they wake up and they're like, I wanna fly! <gasps> Rekwais is coming in fast! <gasps> He's coming in through a light beam! He's breaking through the storm! <gasps> Look how cool this is! <gasps> He's like, everybody stop fighting! Did everyone else just see that too? <laughs> <laughs> with global disasters averted, she could finally take on the 8th gym battle and move along with the game. The reason she was feeling impatient was the entire game she's been developing a grand plan. This is a gift for me, please accept it. The badge? The badge? Oh, it's a move. <laughs> and it all revolved around Chai the Ninjask. Back when she lost Splash and sought the counsel of her mentor, yours truly, I imparted some forbidden knowledge on her. While team building, we decided to keep Chai on the roster because we shared a vision for what she could become. Gym 8 was where it all finally came together. The seed that was planted all the way back with her C-Dot had bloomed into a fully grown, stat-boosting cicada. This was where the cicada sweep was born. This is your moment, Boombox! This is Boombox's moment! <laughs> Chai the Ninjask and Boombox the Wizmer were both caught at the beginning of this journey, and the bond between the two was unbreakable. On their own, they weren't the strongest Pokemon, but when combined, they were an unstoppable force. This was the setup strategy she'd been looking for the entire game, and the missing piece of the puzzle was hiding in the back row of her party the entire time. You know, it didn't have to be like this, but they took out Splash. They took out Splash. <laughs> All that stood between her and the Pokemon League was Victory Road. What's usually a grueling uphill battle with a party full of HM users for some, was for her a chance to flex her new strategy. She had the only two Pokemon she needed to make it through the cave. I made it! Evergrande City! After making the climb, she was finally able to deposit her field move Pokemon for good. Then it was just a matter of assembling what would be her final team for challenging the Elite Four. Although she had the Chai Box combo, she was going into these fights severely underleveled as she tends to do. So everyone is like low 40s. Yeah. 
so it's gonna be a challenge. She knew Chai wasn't always gonna be able to set up, so she needed types that covered her weaknesses. Fortunately, she had a solid group of Pokemon she'd raised throughout her journey to help her get through the challenges ahead. With Chai as her lead, she stepped through the point of no return. Wow. My jaw is on the floor. Half her team hacked by a wall rain with nothing left to lose. Among the casualties were her ice type user, which would have been really nice to have for the next guy who surprise surprise uses dragons, and her electric type, which is great against water types. But hey, she has Chai and Boombox, so maybe there's still some hope. Crit, okay, okay. Shit. Two Pokemon. Two You have to do the champ now. Oh my god. 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 Well, okay then. I stand corrected. There is one more fight ahead of her. And the million dollar question is, will the Chai Box combo be enough? God, how much longer can these stairs be? <gasps> It's Wallace! How is he the champion? Oh my, I did not see this coming. Is that his hair or a cape? I was like, it's fabulous. Okay. Not 
not looking good. Come on, try. Option. Boom box. Come on, baby. Yeah. Losing in the champion battle has got to be the worst way to go out. I have no doubt in my mind that she could have won this if not for that wall rain wrecking house on her team and landing all those one-hit KOs. But that's the game we play. I, I really think I could have done it if not for those three sheer colds. Like, I really do. It was really a bummer because after picking herself back up from the loss of Splash, she worked so hard to make a solid, well-rounded team. She built up a lot of confidence in herself after coming up with cool strategies like her fake-out switches and chai box, so it's a shame things had to end how they did. Tarni's now just sitting out here aimless, <laughs> lost, confused, aimless. Oh, I'm fucking pissed. After the loss, I expected tears, but instead, there was fire. I'm like beyond tears at this point. She may have lost the lock, but having come this far, she still wanted to finish the league. <laughs> I'm pissed. I want some revenge. Now that's the girlfriend I know and love. And hey, while she's at it, why not finish with style? After all, revenge is best served cold. And that's a wrap for my girlfriend's Pokemon Emerald playthrough. It didn't quite go how she was hoping it would, but she can't win them all. Even though she's disappointed that she doesn't get to be a Hoenn Pokemon master, I'm still proud of her. I did it for Splash. Besides, no one said it was her last chance to tackle the Hoenn region, but that's a story for another day. No!